Brothers and sisters, recently I came across a video on social media and it was uh, a communion being conducted online, live on social media. And I saw four people and I also saw a dog, believe it or not, a dog, a, literally a dog uh, on the scene. And it made me think has the fear of God departed from uh, the people of God? I know that all churches don't do such a thing as this, but this was something very disturbing indeed. So the occasion w was uh, Mother's Day, and on Mother's Day they went live. I probably think they went live on Facebook but it's all over social media now and later I came to know that this video went has gone viral and many have watched this video and uh, in the video we see two men a father and son uh, the preacher is the father and he is conducting this um, event with his son daughter and his wife his son and himself are seated on sofas and his wife and daughter are uh, in the middle standing and a dog is on the son's lap and uh, there they cut a cake on in honor of uh, the mother as i said it was mother's day that day and uh, the son says, uh, the father uh, tells the son, uh, go over and hand your mother a bouquet of flowers. Uh, the, the son says, uh, the dog is on my lap, I can't get up. Uh, let my sister uh, do that. So that's an insult. First of all, they don't give uh, the women, the mother at least, if not the sister, they don't give uh, the mother a chair even to sit. Uh, they make her stand and they're insulting. They might have not thought about this this way, but it makes us think. They don't give respect. The son doesn't give respect to uh, his mother. Uh, he could have uh, just dropped the dog down and uh, went over and uh, gone over and uh, handed the bouquet to his mother, but he didn't do that. He insulted his mother. So such a person would, uh, we can't expect uh, uh, such a person to give honor to God. So he's insulting his mother uh, by doing that. And then we see him now and then from the start. Uh, he's on his phone. He, his, um, he has his cell phone in his hand, he's speaking in tongues while uh, gazing over the screen of his cell phone and even while the communion is being conducted, the communion or the Lord's table or the Lord's supper is being conducted, he's speaking in tongues, gazing over the phone, this is uh, the the heights of irreverence, the heights of shamelessness, shamelessly being irreverent in God's presence. And as I said, while even while the communion is being conducted, they are not on their knees, they are on their sofas, and a dog is on his lap, and he doesn't feel any uh, anything wrong with that. And many don't, many who follow this preacher. Later on, I came to know that this preacher is someone very famous, uh, very popular. So naturally, everyone is going to think doing something like this, there's nothing wrong with this. Why? Because the person who did that happens to be a very famous and very popular person. That makes it right, apparently. But no, brothers and sisters, we are ch the church of God. We are the people of God. We are known by Christ's name. We are called Christians. We bear the a great name, the name above all names. And we are bringing disgrace to his name. And God is going to 
hold us accountable for this. He's not going to hold us blameless for this. And uh, later on, the preacher, while conducting the communion, he says, we need to examine ourselves. We need to take part in the Lord's table worthily. If we take part in the Lord's table unworthily, uh, we'll incur sickness or death. And uh, he says, the way to take part in the Lord's table worthily in, is this. Uh, examine yourself, discern that this bread and this wine is not something ordinary. They represent, he didn't say represent, it is the Lord's body, it is the Lord's blood. But first of all, they are not literally the Lord's body and the Lord's blood. If he meant that, at least he said that, but if he meant that, that's wrong. It's just, they're just symbols to make us remember what our Lord did for us, how his body was bruised and crushed for us and how his blood was spilled for us. Next, it's not just uh, taking it uh, like this. Uh, this bread is not ordinary. It is. Uh, it signifies the Lord's body. The wine signifies uh, his blood. Just knowing that, just understanding that is not enough to make one worthy to take part in the Lord's table. We need to examine ourselves whether we, we are connected to the Lord, whether we are walking according to His will, whether we are pleasing to Him. Is there holiness in our lives? Are there sins in our lives for which we have not, we have not yet received forgiveness? Have we been forgiven? Have we been washed by the blood of the Lamb? Are our garments spotless and white? That's what we are, uh, we are supposed to think, what, what we are supposed to pay attention to when we approach the Lord's table. But uh, apparently, such an attitude of irreverence and uh, no fear of God apparently influences even the interpretation of scriptures concerning the Lord's table. It influences everything, apparently. First of all, we need to understand that as time is passing on, there is a lack of irreverent, irreverence in the church. People are starting to take things lightly in the church. Whether it's going to the church, uh, attending church, worshipping, praying, uh, hearing God's word, reading on their own, any, anything spiritual, they do it irreverently. There is no reverence. There is no piety we see today. Everything is done casually. And we say, it's okay. It's okay, all right? We are not living in the dispensation of the law. We are living under grace. And under the name of grace, every unimaginably uh, blatant, blatantly shameless Things are done in the name of grace, and many bear it, many tolerate it, many applaud it even. But we need to speak out against these evils before it's too late, before many innocent uh, get gripped with this and uh, be just uh, swept by the flow of this current of uh, shameless activities in the church. So, I'd like to read a verse from God's Word, Psalm 20, 89, Psalm 89, verse 7. Psalm 89, verse 7 says, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints, and to be had in reverence of all them that are about Him. God is greatly to be feared when we assemble as His saints together to worship Him, uh, in this case, to have communion with Him, remembering his, uh, his body and His blood being sacrificed for us on the cross um, through the Lord's table. God is to be greatly feared and apparently there was no fear. There was no trace of fear uh, in these people. No reverence, not one trace. A dog on the lap, sitting on sofas, no reverence, no fear of God, the son not honoring his mother. We need to understand this. We need to keep animals 
where they ought to be. We need to keep our parents where they ought to be. We need to uh, keep God where He ought to be. We need to honor each one according to what they're worth, according to what we ought to. So let us not take our animals and think they're our children. And let us not take our parents for granted that they're just nothing. Okay? And let us not ignore God. Let us not forget who God is. It's not enough that we just know some information about God. We need to know who He is, how terrible He is. And the Word of God says He is to be had in reverence of all that are about Him. So where is the reverence, I ask? Brothers and sisters, we need to have reverence. It's not about you attending church regularly. It's not about you taking part in the communion that pleases God. Do you have reverence for Him? Do you do His will? Do you obey His commandments written in His Word? That's what pleasing God means. Not just taking part in the Lord's table. And many today are deviating from God's Word. The Word of God says, just one bread, one loaf of bread, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. But we have many crumbs of bread today, and there are all sorts of uh, bread. Nowadays, I have seen people take part in the Lord's table with biscuits. Uh, these are the heights of irreverence and carelessness, recklessness in the church. And some take part in the Lord's table with Pepsi and Coke. Uh, instead of wine and the Word of God says one cup we go and uh, say uh, it's an issue of hygiene I'll catch some infection I'll uh, contract some infection from someone so let's do it with uh, many cups multiple cups who gives us the license to do all these things can we change God's Word is the Word of God so light a matter that we can do these editing th editing stuff, we can change stuff, we can add in, we can take away something and it's okay? And it's all done in the name of grace. But let us remember, God does not change. God did not become just gracious over in the New Testament. He was gracious all over. Uh, all over the ages he's going to be gracious and uh, he is terrible he is to be had in reverence and fear we need to obey God's word as his law not as a bunch of options he throws on us it is his law even in this New Testament his word is a law unto us so next many uh, say that uh, as I said, we'll have, we'll incur some infection if we use just one cup. But we, do we have faith in God? Does God know about infections? Does He know about our body? And has the, has He not taken this into account when He uh, inspired the writers of Scripture? When they, when Paul wrote one cup, did the Holy Spirit not know about these infections? Can God control the, the, the microbes, the microorganisms in uh, our body? Can't He preserve us from illness? And is the Lord's table something very ordinary, the bread and the wine? Yes, they are not literally the Lord, uh, Lord's body and blood, but are they something totally ordinary, like other items of food we eat? No. So we don't have to worry about contracting an infection because that's not going to happen unless the Lord permits. And if the Lord permits, it is for our good. So it's about your faith in God. It's about how, what do you think about God? How, how do you know Him? Do you know Him? Do you realize who He is? And do you trust in Him? And when you don't trust in Him, when you don't know who He is, that's where the problem lies. You think you'll contract an infection. So, let me move on and talk about online communion. Conducting the Lord's Table or the Lord's Supper or the communion online. 
because of the lockdown we are not able to gather together at least in our country India even in your country you might not be able to gather together uh, in your churches in your church buildings so uh, some have come up with this idea let us uh, conduct the Lord's table online so is this scriptural I, I just want to share some thoughts from God's Word so first of all let's understand that the Lord's table or the Lord's Supper or the communion has two aspects one it's signifying the Lord's death we are commemorating his death his sacrifice how he died for us how his body was crushed how his blood was spilled for us number two it's a fellowship we are having not only with God but with also our fellow Christian brothers and sisters who are our the members of one body the Lord is our head so it's a fellowship thing so when it comes to fellowship let me read a verse from Hebrews chapter 10 let's turn to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 Hebrews 10 25 not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching so as the day approaching means as the coming of the Lord approaches nearer and nearer we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is so that's what fellowship is we assemble together when we don't do that we're doing it online there are some limits we can't substitute our assembling together with something like this online online fellowship is uh, is no by by no means equivalent to literal fellowship of us gathering together in one place physically geographically it cannot be substituted with anything online it can't be done online totally but since we don't have any other options we have been meeting together for prayer and worship and the hearing of the word for weeks over and uh, all of a sudden it's a lockdown we can't uh, gather together so let us keep in touch let us not lose the lose the heat uh, the spiritual atmosphere and uh, our connection with each other so let us do things like this online let us pray let us hear God's Word let us worship together let us sing songs and let us use uh, things like Facebook live and uh, YouTube but it all has limits brothers it all has limits sisters so we can't substitute fellowship with something like this online but when it comes to the Lord's table uh, let us uh, turn to 1st Corinthians chapter 11 1st Corinthians 11 is a chapter in which we find um, the Lord's table being explained in much detail in, uh, in comparison to the other passages which talk about the same so 1st Corinthians chapter 11 I want to go through this point by point number one let us turn to uh, verse 20 verse 20 when ye come together therefore into one place this is not to eat the Lord's Supper 1st Corinthians 11 20 there we read when ye come together in one place so the Lord's Supper is to be conducted is to be observed when the church comes together the members of the church come together in one place but when we are online we are not doing that we are in different places okay we are not in one place so and this says this is not to eat the Lord's Supper that implies that tells us that in the early church in the first century in Corinth there was a problem there so the problem was this they were not taking part in the Lord's table the right way okay there were some things to be corrected and the the Apostle Paul addresses this issue so when he says this he's saying you're coming together to take part in the Lord's table but the way you're doing it is not right therefore what you're doing is no more the Lord's table it's not valid the same way baptism is not valid if if it is done in an unscriptural way if it 
is done uh, in a way that is not scriptural. It is no more a baptism. It's just like taking a bath or giving a bath. It's no more baptism. So in the same way, if we don't do the Lord's table in the right way, the Lord does not count it as the Lord's table, but we are insulting the Lord's name. By doing something that uh, we think it's the Lord's table, it, it resembles the Lord's table, we're insulting God's name. And God will hold us accountable for that. And uh, many in Corinth uh, started getting weak and sick and some died. Uh, in verse 30, we read that. So verse 20 says, when you come together in one place, so that implies, that shows us so clearly that the Lord's table is to be conducted when we gather together into one place. That is scripture talking to us. It is not an option. It is a law. Number two, let us uh, read the next verse, verse 21. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his uh, before other his own supper and one is hungry and another is drunken so the problem in Corinth was this some were eating before others could have some and uh, the result was some were having uh, to, to to the full and some were left hungry some were getting drunk and some were uh, left with nothing they, they, there were people who were deprived of the Lord's table in this manner. And this was an issue uh, Paul um, uh, goes against and talks against. In the same way, when we do uh, the, Lord's, uh, the Lord's Supper online, does everyone have bread and wine in their house? Can everyone participate in this? At least not in my country, in India. So, so some take part in it, some don't. Some just watch this, some don't take part in it. So why did they take, don't take part in it? Because we have not made sure that everyone gets it. So this passage in scripture implies to us that when the Lord's table is being conducted, we need to make sure that every member of Christ who is worthy to take part in it, gets it. If we don't, if someone who is fit to take part in it and he doesn't get it. It's the responsibility of the preacher, first of all, who conducts this, and also all the other members of uh, the church who are insulting that person. In uh, verse 22, we read, we uh, move on to the third point is that, is that we insult. So number one, we need to get in one place. Number two, we all sh we should make sure that everyone gets it. Number three, verse 22, we read, What, have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Here the apostle says, Despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not. So we're shaming them that have not, those who don't partake in it. So uh, when we do it online and some of our brothers and sisters don't get to take part in the Lord's table. We're insulting them. And number four, verse 24 and 25, we read, And when he had given thanks, speaking about the Lord Jesus, of course, the Lord Jesus, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took a cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. So, how was this being conducted? The first person who founded this ordinance, who conducted the first, first Lord's Supper, was the Lord himself. And he did this in this manner. He had given thanks. He broke it. He gave it and said, take, eat. So the one conducting is the spiritual leader or the minister. The Lord uh, handed over this to the apostles. The apostles did this uh, in the church, in the early church. And they ordained ministers to do things sacred like this. And those are the persons who are authorized by God, by scripture, whether explicitly or implicitly, it is they who are ordained for this ministry. It is not something that anyone can do. 
So the bread must be given by a minister, an ordained minister. And uh, the people have to receive. But when you do it online, you conduct the Lord's table. Uh, they take their own bread. They take their own wine. That is not done in a scriptural way. This is not the scriptural pattern. The scriptural pattern says the spiritual leader, the pastor, the elder, or the bishop takes the cup, takes the bread, prays and blesses, and he breaks the bread and uh, di distributes the bread and the wine. That's how the people of God ought to receive it. And this is the pattern laid by scripture. And again, let us not take it lightly. Yeah, it, this is the scriptural pattern, but we, I, I assume that we can make some small changes and God is not going to hold us accountable for that. Uh, taking into account this lockdown, uh, we are shut, uh, we are not doing it intentionally. We have a good reason to do it. No, brothers and sisters, the Lord, of, the, the Lord knows uh, what, uh, what kind of a situation we are going to go through when the scripture was being written. The Lord knew it. And yet, the word of the Lord stands firm. We cannot go against God's word. And if we do, we are insulting God's name. And uh, moving on, number five. We note that when the Lord did this, the Lord Jesus didn't do this in public. He fed the 5,000. He fed the 7,000. He did those things in public. That was to uh, satisfy their physical hunger. But when he did this sacred thing, when he performed this sacred ordinance or ministry, he did this among his chosen ones, his disciples, the apostles. So the church, uh, in the early church also, the apostles did this in the church, not in public. This table was not for the public scene. So in, in the internet, when we do it online, anyone gets in, anyone logs in, he can watch our service. And uh, even if you do it on Zoom or anything like that in a, on pri private platforms when, where you have privacy, you can't know for sure that uh, people uh, the members of your congregation, they're in their houses. Someone might have come in their house, maybe a relative, maybe an unbeliever, and he also takes part in the Lord's table. You can't make sure of all that. Uh, you, you, can, you can't know for sure, okay? And no matter how much you argue, uh, you can't make sure who is taking part in it, who is not, and uh, it's not dignity. It's not dignity. And so the Lord's table is not something for the public, okay? It is a private thing. It is something sacred, reserved only to the redeemed of God, to the church. Number six, what did, uh, we need to consider what others over the internet, you have bread and wine in your hand, but what do others have in their hand? Maybe a biscuit, maybe a, a glass of Pepsi. Huh? So we can't make sure that they have the right, uh, right symbols there, uh, the right objects of the right symbols uh, that den denotes the Lord's death. We can't make sure of that. So when we don't do it online, when we physically gather together into one place, all of these problems are solved. But when we do it online, all these problems crop up. And that's one of the reasons the Lord has explicitly, uh, if not implicitly, explicitly has uh, made it so clear in verse 20 that it is to be done when we gather into one place. And uh, moving on, verse 7, uh, point 7, let us also consider that not all can come online. The seventh thing I want to share with you is not all can come online at the same time, at least not at the same time. So some are going to con uh, partake in the Lord's table now, uh, if I'm to conduct the Lord's table now, and some are going to take part in it in the evening, tomorrow, maybe next week even, and months together if this video stays online. Is the Lord's table something to be... Um, 
conducted in this manner that people can uh, replay this video again and again again and again and take part in the Lord's table like that the Lord's table is not something so cheap my brothers and sisters let us not insult the Lord's name okay let us have reverence let us have the fear of God let us understand please I urge you to understand that the Lord is not after you that you need to I'll get to uh, a last point but please bear with me that the Apostle uh, Paul and Peter when they were in prison they didn't take part in the Lord's table just like that okay I'll get to that but please let us remember that it's about doing the Lord's will obeying God's Word keeping his commandments pleasing him that pleases him that makes us acceptable to him not taking part in the Lord's table regularly that the Lord counts and he approves us no so we don't have to be worried about taking part in the Lord's table at a time like this when we can't when we scripturally can't let us refrain from it because the Lord knows our condition he's not going to hold us accountable for that but if we do something against scripture he will definitely hold us accountable for that and uh, number eight we need to understand if you're in India we have these temples uh, in which unbelievers go and worship idols uh, there if you go to visit one of these temples uh, on your way back uh, before you go back uh, go back to your home they give you something to eat and they call it something holy uh, they consider it something sacred but what they call it is prasadam or prasad so they use this uh, as something that denotes that the deity is pleased with this uh, devotee okay but some people have uh, stooped so low to think of the Lord's table the bread and the wine to be something like that a prasada anyone can get it no one needs any special qualifications or preparations to receive that prasadam and eat it okay anyone can get it any visitor to the temple can get it that's not the same case with the Lord's table the Lord's table is not a not a meaningless ritual that we do okay it has great meaning it has the greatest of meanings by no means is this an exaggeration I can't exaggerate it enough okay so the Lord's table is so meaningful the Lord of heaven and earth the creator of heaven and earth who created all things the whole universe by the power of his own voice he has no beginning he has no end he didn't have to come down to die for us but he did he came down in the form of man died for us and he himself ordained this practice this ministry how seriously then how reverently then should we take this regard this and conduct this in the church the most reverently the most the most piously ought we to conduct the service but we do we are doing it we are, I'm not saying that everyone is doing it but many many churches are doing it in such a irreverent manner and now when this lockdown uh, has happened the colors are the true colors are showing how much fear of God is there in the church really that's showing now and uh, we see these heights so finally I want to say this the ninth point as I said Peter and Paul were on occasions not only Peter and Paul many of the Apostles in the early church were thrown into prison they were thrown into circumstances if not prison in which uh, they were not able to come together into one place it was just like a quarantine and they could not come together and uh, do this conduct the Lord's table take part in the Lord's Supper but they never had this thought that hey I need to get uh, I need to take part in the Lord's table let us do this alone in the prison we are apostles after all uh, let us do it uh, on our own they didn't do that we we do it weekly or monthly and we feel so strained to do it but they used to do it daily 
In Acts chapter 2, we read they used to break bread almost daily, whenever they used to gather together in the houses uh, for worship. But they didn't feel com compelled to do it in prison uh, while alone. Why do we feel so constrained to do it on our own in such an unscriptural manner? And we take this lockdown to be an excuse. It's of no excuse. The church has gone through so many circumstances like this. Uh, she didn't uh, stoop so low as this age, uh, as in this age, brothers. So let us come back to the scriptures. Let us not look at the popular preachers, what they are doing. Let us not look at uh, what that pastor or this pastor is doing. It's not about your pastor. It's about God's word. It's about his name. It's about his honor. And you ought to honor him. You ought to revere him. His name is to be had in reverence of all that are about him. That's what the word of God says. Do you have reverence? That's the basic point. Before you come into, do we conduct the Lord's uh, table online? It's about, do you have reverence in your heart? Do you value God's word as you ought to? And they have gone beyond this and they have had a dog on the lap and they have conducted the Lord's table. What, what heights of irreverence, brothers? And uh, we have to speak against this. Okay? It's not just criticism. It's about speaking against this evil because many are going to uh, uh, pull, out, pull a stunt like this and many are going to uh, go with this flow. Many innocent people, those who follow this preacher, they're going to go along with this flow unless someone raises a voice. So finally, I just want to say, Conducting the Lord's table, the Lord's supper, or the communion online by Facebook or any platforms on the internet is not biblical. It's not scriptural. It's not acceptable to God. You're insulting God. And anything unscriptural is sinful. If you're doing it ignorantly, God has uh, forbear, forborne you. So, But don't test His patience. Don't provoke. Repent and revere Him, and do these things according to God's Word. Anything, anything in the church has to be done in accordance with God's Word. And moreover, they're doing it with a dog on the lap. I don't know how you take part in the Lord's table, but do it in the most reverent manner possible, because it's the most reverent of all uh, times when we commemorate his death. What, is, what can be more serious than that which happened on Calvary? So when you're doing something that commemorates that, how, how Reverend Lord, do you, uh, do you think you ought to do it in a casual way? No way. So you, you're uh, couching on a sofa and you're just comfortable over there and you're just taking a piece of bread in your hand and just having a bite? Is this how you ought to take part in the Lord's table? You do your own calculations, brothers. But if you speak to your conscience, you'll know uh, that it's not a reverence. The Lord does not have to uh, write out everything. Do this, do that. We are not robots. We are not machines. We are His children. We are not slaves who obey all these rules. Okay, but we see the heart of God in God's word. We see what pleases Him, and we know what pleases Him, and that's it. We do what pleases Him. That's what we are to do, not get worried about taking part in the Lord's table and doing some things like this, which are so shameless. And uh, finally, I just want to say that always remember that God is in control of all things, whether it's about this lockdown, whether it's about coronavirus, or any pandemic whatsoever, whatever happens in the church, whatever happens in the world and it affects us, it's all under God's control and He knew it and He knows it. He knows our weaknesses, He knows our circumstances and He will not hold us accountable for what we cannot do. But He will hold us accountable for what we can do and what we ought to do and what we are doing against His will. 
So let us not cross our boundaries, cross our limits that God has set in His Word and do something like this that is so irreverent. And I pray that God uh, brings reverence and the fear of God in the church through this message. And I urge you to share with this with other brothers and sisters in Christ, whether this video and also share by your own way, share this uh, message, if not this video, share uh, about this, the, the fear of God, the reverence for God may return to the church. That's what we need. If we want revival, the fear of God must come back. The reverence for God, the zeal for God's holiness must come back to the church. That is the only way the Lord is going to be in our midst or else we'll have all these phony fake experiences of revivals and we're just going to have all these uh, fake um, spiritual experiences. If we want real revival, if we want the true presence of God, the glory of God in the church, we want holiness. We need holiness. We need um, reverence for God. So let God help us all revere Him fear Him, both by our words, both by our deeds, the way we live, the way we do everything in the church. May God bless you.